Hi guys, it's been quite a while since I made the last video and this video I just want to get out so that uh, I can explain to you guys what we had to do for the first batch, the first 30 units of the QWK XMM Mark <laughs> Challenger Mark III standard. Wow, that's a mouthful. So, um, and why there has been a delay? And that's because we, I have noticed there's been a bug, a programming bug uh, that is involved with the safety risk of the operation of this blaster because um, uh, let me explain to you later when I demonstrate to you so anyway uh, we reported this issue to QWK and they have uh, found the issue and also fixed it so um, and we can't actually uh, mess with the chipboard ourselves because it is digitally locked and it's only accessible by them themselves by QWK themselves so they have no choice but to make an extra 30 units of this chipboard and with the bug fix so there has been some delay waiting for this chip to be programmed tested and then shipped to us and hence the delay all right so um, to replace this chipboard is pretty simple as you can see there are several uh, sockets and then to replace this part, you just need to solder two points. Desolder from the unit itself and then, you know, solder it back to the chipboard. And it's pretty easy. The, the rest of them are just sockets. Uh, Maybe a bit confusing, but not so much if you have a proper guide. Right. So other than that, uh, this is also what we are swapping out for. This is uh, the aluminum, the CNC aluminum. Uh, plunger tube and the pusher slash bridge assembly although this is actually one unit so you can see the teeth here is made of uh, tempered steel as well CNC tempered steel apparently and of course the pro spring that will be replacing the stock standard spring so um, well this video is actually just to show you guys and um, what I had to do and then also, hopefully, that can be, it can be helpful for you guys that want to open up your Mark trees to do maintenance, repair, or whatever. Right? So, yeah, before I actually disassemble this thing, let me just show you what was the, the programming bugs that involved with the safety risk with the first batch of the Mark III. Uh, this issue is only on the Mark III standard, not on the Pro. So, if you have the Pro, you don't have to worry about this. So let me just take this off. Right, so as usual, the operation, let's just prime it first, put it on a uh, semi. Right, that will prime the blaster. Right, so uh, let me demonstrate. I have some darts already loaded, uh, five darts. And the box is actually a programming box with the three shot burst. Let me just demonstrate. So um, now, wait, yeah, <laughs> let's chamber one round in. Right, so there's one round loaded in the blaster right now. So I'll pull the trigger once in three shot burst mode. Hmm. Right, so three darts shot out. I have one more dart in the chamber and one dart left in the magazine so on the standard there's no bolt lock so as we know the fire cut off is when the sensor the magnetic sensors on the trigger unit senses that there's no more darts by this magnets here it will cut off the trigger so um, if you continue to pull it will shoot it will shoot out the last dart in the chamber load one more, the, the last dart from the magazine into the chamber and then it will cut off because there's no more darts in the magazine right now. Right, so uh, for example now, uh, let me just pull the trigger. Right, so you can see the last dart is chambered into the magazine and then now it stopped firing. Bear in mind, this is a three shot burst mode, right? It shot out one round. So three shot out of one round. Now if I continue to pull the trigger, Right, nothing will happen because the magazine is now empty. But let's say if I want to reload right now, bear in mind there's still one dart in the chamber right now. As soon as I remove the magazine, 
and pay attention, I do not have my finger anywhere near the trigger. See? Yeah, I did not pull the trigger and the blaster will attempt to fire off the two remaining shot from the three shot burst. And this is very, very dangerous. So I could not accept this type of a bug or a flaw because uh, if a blaster fire by itself unintentionally without you actually pulling the trigger and actuating it, that is extremely dangerous. And this is not something that we can tolerate. So yeah, I made a lot of noises to KWK and they finally, uh, you know, agreed to send me the replacement bots. Otherwise then you guys have to wait, might have to wait even longer because this first batch will be rendered completely useless and not sellable. But yeah, so that is the bug. I will be replacing the chip bot with the replacement that QWK sent, sent me and then I'll demonstrate you to, to you again how this is fixed. All right, so now let's get down to business. I'm going to disassemble the gearbox, the chip board, and also the trigger unit out of the lower receiver. All right, let's go. All right, when you disassemble or assemble the Mark III, uh, because of the rather fragile, <laughs> transparent lower, it's not polycarbonate, so it's not that sturdy. So I would refrain from using any type of uh, power tools unless you know what you are doing. Uh, otherwise then, you may break the screw pots quite easily by over tightening them. So yeah, something that you might want to keep in mind. Although uh, QWK has already uh, make a new batch of a lower in the very light gray color, non-transparent, and it is made of nylon. So that is much more durable than the, you know, this first batch transparent lower. It will be available as spare parts. Uh, you can buy it separately. Now you will be able to see the barrel exposed right now. Um, the next step is to remove the uh, dust stopper, I guess. So, right, lock the bolt manually. That will expose the screw on both sides. All right, this is the stock dust stopper piece that the we will be replacing with the Pyro Cannon's active dust corrector, which is this. So you can pretty much just toss this. Right, so with the dart stopper or a dart gate, whatever you call it, <laughs> removed, the barrel is now released from the lower receiver itself. And this is the scar muzzle. Uh, it's 3D printed, so yeah. And this is the stock barrel with two grooves so that it will be secured on the groove on the lower receiver on these two, these two points. Right, so with the barrel out of the place, we can now proceed to remove the four small screw on the chip board and also the trigger unit itself. Right, the next step is to remove the two uh, pin screw on the receiver side. Sorry, on the gearbox. Oh well, I guess it's still receiver. So. Now, before you do that, you want to determine which one is the male and which one is the female. Otherwise, then you risk damaging the screw itself and also the receiver itself. So look for, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but um, basically this is the female and then this is the male. So you want to open it by unscrewing the male side because the female side is lock, uh, friction, uh, friction lock to the, sh to the receiver itself by the thread. So this is the male side. Right, with the two male gone, you should be able to remove the female uh, screw pin from the, from the receiver and the gearbox. 
right? This is the screw pin. And the reason why you don't want to unscrew on the wrong side, which is this side, is because you see, it is, it has this, um, oh my goodness, focus. Yeah. So these friction lines here, if you unscrew from this side, yeah, it is going to cause damage to the receiver itself. Now, before you can safely remove the whole thing, you need to deal with uh, this part first, which <laughs> the fire selector has already come off, supposed to be sitting here. And unfortunately, this is one of the design flaws that I don't really like about the Mark III. The fire selector switch, yeah, you can't uh, fix this permanently on this position because then you will not be able to remove you know, the gearbox and this part out. So what I do is um, I just cut a small piece of electrical tape, stick it here, and then friction fit it over here, then it's good enough. All right, so anyway, uh, remove the fast selector switch. And now before you push the entire trigger unit out, you want to make sure that this cable on this side is out of the way because otherwise you, you really have a hard time pu pulling it out. So grab the wire on this side, the harnesses, like so. So it's free. Now the trigger unit is loose. So use your thumb, lightly push the, the switch here just a bit and it should come right off like so. Right, when you have this part out, take care of this part. This is just uh, you know something to cover the switch so that it doesn't show the <laughs> the rather ugly silver side of it. All right, so, and remember, uh, before you take out the gearbox, remember to lock the bolt, or at least uh, pay attention to this uh, bolt release or slash lock, uh, lock latch, because at the release position, you will not be able to remove it, take the gearbox out from the receiver, because, yeah. Right, okay, always remember that. Right, and now the gearbox is out. And you can leave the, the lower receiver aside. All right, so this basically is what you will get if you purchase from us, because we cannot ship it assembled. So this is the gearbox unit itself, right? Right, before you disassemble the gearbox, make sure you use the battery and prime the blaster. Otherwise, it can be quite difficult to deal with <laughs> to open the gearbox without the spring uh, prime. Alright, so first, um, I will have to desolder this uh, buggy chipboard out first. So let me just show you. Uh, my solder station is... <laughs> let me get it here. Right, but anyway, before that, we should unplug it. Right, uh, as I was saying. Now, uh, before you unplug all the sockets, you should, you know, take a picture or something so that you can always refer back to when you replug them. So for me, uh, I would just be making a marking using a marker pen on this side of uh, on this particular socket because this and this two socket is exactly the same i don't want to get confused with that so i just use a marker pen make a simple marking so i know where it goes like so i mean you don't really have to follow me but yeah this is what i do right so now let's unplug the sockets and that's it. That's all the plug you should remove from the chipboard itself. Uh, this this is uh, this one. You just let it sit there. I guess yeah. All right. So to replace this chipboard, you need to desolder these two points. So there's a positive, and then there's a negative. So yeah, let's do it. And yeah, um, I suggest that you have a proper tools to do so the job because otherwise then it can be extremely frustrating. 
and this is great, man. Sometimes I wish I have more than a pair of arms. Yeah, this is it. Right, let's get my solder. Ooh. Right, um, I'm not an expert solder, so uh, apology, apology if I do something wrong. All right, and that's the two points of the solder out. Uh, I had a little bit of an issue earlier is because of the, the temperature. It was only at 250 and it wasn't hot enough to do this uh, properly. So with the two point off, now the chipboard is out of the way. So I'll be keeping this and shipping all of them back to QWK on a later date. All right, so this is the replacement. So we'll be doing the same thing. So just solder these two points. Remember the AT is where the positive paper go. If you do this step, if you reverse it, then uh, this board is, is fried. All right, so before I reconnect the, you know, the sockets, maybe I should explain to you what actually this do. So this is the trigger, is to detect the trigger, the signal from the trigger. And this is supposed the bolt lock, but I'm not sure why it's presented on the standard since there's no bolt lock on the standard. But yeah, they have the thing prepared. And then uh, this is to, uh, what is this? Uh, basically, it detects the, the optic sensors some, somewhere here and meaning the, the, uh, the firing system uh, I don't really know how to explain this but yeah it is to receive the signal from the optic sensors and then uh, this is the fire selector switch and that's pretty much it so yeah So let's grab the four pin, the red, black, yellow, and green socket, and plug it into this pin. But basically, you can't really get it wrong because the number of the socket is quite limited. Right? And then there's a three pin, yellow, black, and red, goes to here. Right, and then there's two more left. One is for the trigger, the other is for the bolt lock. Well, there's no bolt lock, so yeah. So remember that I made a marking. Yep, so this one goes to the upper one. So let's plug in this first. Right, and we are done replacing the chipboard. So before we, you know, move on, let's just plug in the battery and test it. Hopefully it doesn't spark or anything. All right, so just make sure, make sure it's safety, all right. All right, there's no sparks. That's a good sign. <laughs> all right, so let's put it in semi. Right, no problem. Three shot bursts. Right, no issue. Let's try full auto. Yep, no problem. Uh, remember, do not drive fire too many times. I'm um, just demonstrating to you, so uh, yeah. Alright, so there's no problem after we replace the chipboard. Now I can proceed to open the gearbox up and then show you how the inside looks like. Alright, to do that, you want to deal with the, <laughs> the bolt 
slash charging handle. There is total of a four screw, three type of this uh, rather shitty screw. They strip easily if you don't use a correct screwdriver. And then there's a grub screw on this side. And this one, yeah, they actually, they can actually be quite tight sometimes. So you may have to heat it up with a hair dryer or something if, if necessary. <laughs> Otherwise you, you risk damaging the grub screw and then you can get stuck there forever. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right, you want to be really careful. All right, this is rather loose, so that's okay. That's a good thing. I really want to use a heat gun on this. All right, make sure to use the correct size screwdriver for this. But uh, after we upgrade it with the the aluminum. Uh, plunger tube will be using a proprietary propri a, a better screw provided by uh, with the package so i need to be really careful opening this three screw all right so with the three screw removed and the grub screw loosened you can just pull this uh, nylon charging handle slash <laughs> dummy bolt out Right, so now you can, you are left with this uh, bar here. Um, you can use a plier of some sort, grab it tightly, and then just turn the gearbox and loosen the whatever this thing is called. So it's threaded on this end. Now, with the charging handle dummy bolt removed, now we can proceed to remove the... It's part of the sensor. I'm not sure what this is called. But in China, or at least QWK, call this, you know, the feng shui bolt thing because it looks like one. Right, once the two screw is out, you can remove this, this, uh, this cover thing. Set it aside. And that is the the sensor component i'm not really sure what it's called but yeah it detects the positions of the gear and then you know send signal to the motherboard or chipboard to tell what it's supposed to do so there's one screw there that you need to remove first right uh with the screw removed you should be able to take out the this plate thing rather easily you can just yeah, just wiggle it out like so. Again, set it aside. And now we are ready to open up the gearbox. So again, there's a one, two, three, three short screw, and then there's one, two, three, four, five long screw. Very very easy to you know to recognize them. But there's one thing. Um <laughs> I believe QWK factory uh, they use this power tool to do this. So some of them may have already been stripped. But um, so far, I've tested a couple of units with a few, you know, uh, loose screw. But they, surprisingly, they work quite well still. There's been no issue whatsoever. And also, this gearbox shell will be available as a replacement part in the near future. So I won't be worried about that. So let's remove all the screws. Right, and that is all the screw removed. We can now split this thing open. So when you want to open the shell, you have to first um, grab the pusher and then pull it back a bit because then you will not be able to open to split open the shell because this part is actually uh, blocked by the component. If you can see there, yeah, this part. If this is not pushed backward, you will not be able to split open the gearbox. So, right when you 
I would, I would, uh, I would say um, the best way to open the gearbox is by placing your left hand on this side, applying pressure on the back of the gearbox, and then slowly split open from the front. Because there is a spring here that will that might fly off if you're not careful. So yeah, let me do this. Alright, so Ooh, yeah, there you go. And slowly. Yep. You will not be able to, you know, take this part of the shell off completely because the wiring is in the way. But that is okay, just be careful. So you can see, um, this is the bridge, the pusher, return spring, and the guide. So yeah, it is responsible by uh, responsible for keeping the bolt in the forward positions and also loading the darts into the chamber, etc. Right. So this is how the inside of the gearbox looks like. So you have your gear sets, four of them, and you have the motor. Uh, uh, anti reversal latch, the barrel gear, and I know this is called a sector gear. These two spur gears, I guess. So this already came off when I opened it just now. And this is the sector gear. Uh, bear in mind there are some shims. This is the shims, this silver color thing. Don't lose them. And there are also a smaller shim on this side. So you want to be careful not to lose this as well. Because otherwise then your gear may, you know, move, have some tolerance uh, play in the gearbox and that's not good. Right, so these are all steel and heat tempered. Um, so they are pretty durable. The first thing that you may have to replace is probably maybe the piston or the motor itself. The gear, <laughs> I won't be worried about it. And this is the catch mechanism, not really catch, but uh, piston release mechanism. This thing here. So this, you see, is activated by the loop on the sector gear here. Yeah, this part. So when the gear spins, and then it will activate this, and then the piston will be released and you know it will shoot out the darts push by pushing out the air from the air, uh, for the from the plunger yeah so uh you don't really have to mess with most of these things unless you want to reloop them i suppose All right so this is the stock made of nylon the plunger and the bridge assembly so it looks like this though it does have a steel uh metal teeth rack here my goodness this camera is so useless it's not focusing half of the time <laughs> yeah whatever so we will be replacing this thing out with the aluminum one so let's let me take out the o-ring and you pretty much can just well for me <laughs> i'll be discussing them so right so the o-ring And this is the piston and also the catch mechanism here. So this thing is very interesting. Let me just release the spring first because I don't want this thing to shoot in my face. It can break my nose. So um, to release it, simply just push this thing forward and it should release. So be really careful when you deal with this assembly. So this is the spring guide slash catch mechanism. And this is the standard spring. And this is the piston itself. So you have your O-ring, and then this is the sharp pad silicon buffer. And you have to be really careful as well. Uh, when, whenever you open your gearbox, make sure to check this silicon piece. Make sure it's not coming off, or something bad can really happen to your gearbox. Yeah. So how this thing works is when you have a spring inside, uh, make sure this catch, this latch part here, 
is installed like this. Right, so this is how it catch. So whenever the gear uh, gear train system compress the spring, meaning pulling the entire you know this plunger tube assembly backwards, it will compress the spring. And this catch is responsible to keep the piston prime or charge like so. So this part, you know, this, this thing here, this little latcher is responsible for interacting with this uh, bar. So it goes in like so. Like so. So whenever the sector gear, the gear lobe activates this bar, it will push the catch mechanism forward and thereby releasing the spring and also the entire piston. All right, so this is how it works. It's really simple. Although these are made of nylon, I haven't seen any breakage on them yet, not even from PWK themselves. So I think they are pretty durable, but if you need replacement parts, this will all be available or even upgrade parts. Now, the reason why these two parts is not in metal, well, according to QWK is that this is much, much lighter, hence better FPS, uh, you know, better uh, FPS performance. And also it, it is actually less, uh, it causes less wear on the entire gearbox itself. You know, I'm not sure, but it does make sense to me and I don't really see any reason for using nylon on these two parts, so yeah. So let me install the upgraded spring, the Pro Spring, which is the slightly longer spring. Yeah. So you want to do this, you want to put the spring into the piston first and then make sure the latch here is sitting correspondingly to the catch on the spring rod here. You want to be really careful doing this because yeah, the upgraded spring is no joke. You want to compress it all the way down, right? Like this. And be really, really careful now because this spring, if there's an accidental release, this thing is going to shoot out and it's probably going to break something. Right, be very careful. So now we are done swapping the spring. It is quite easy. Shame though, the gearbox does not have a QD system, but I suppose they can't really do it with the catch of this design. Right, so let, let me prep the plunger tube. So we want to use some silicon grease. Just a subtle amount. Now I'll be also using some uh, grease on the O-ring itself. All right, I should do it. All right, make sure the assembly slides smoothly. Right, uh, you probably do not want to do this test with the spring installed. My mistake, but yeah. So make sure there's no you know, weird thing going on. Now you hear there's a leak, it's because I potted the pusher here to combat the vacuum loading thing. Yeah, so still is pretty good. All right, so let me apply some loops on the metal teeth rack here. Make sure to use the correct loops. Uh, the green color one is for gears. If you use, uh, it, it, is, it will be okay if you use the silicon loop as well, but they are not as sticky. So you may have to reapply them uh, more, than, uh, more usual than this type of a super sticky grease meant for metals. 
All right, that should do it. Oh yeah, uh, you know this this four thing here. This lights around the gearbox, so make sure they are looped as well. All right, that should do it. I'm not doing a really good job here, but yeah. All right, let me wipe my hand a bit. It's a bit too greasy. Right, so with this assembly prepared, we can now put the gearbox back, you know, together. So uh, first, make sure this gear from here is removed, because otherwise then you will have a hard time trying to install <laughs> the plunger assembly. So let's install the Oh yeah, probably can see it better now with the sector gear in. So if I spin the gear, so at, at the point it will activate actuate this bar like so. Yep. And then that will release the spring and the piston. Yep. Right, so we can install the assembly first. So you want to put it down to the shell. Like so. And then carefully set the catch mechanism back to the hole in the, uh, the this bar thing here. Right, make sure it's in. Right, so this is how it should look like. Now, you want to install this spur gear. Like so. And then we are ready to close the gearbox, but not forget about the plunger tube, bridge, return, spring, and guide. So this, this can be a bit tricky, so you want to do this in a way. Once this thing is installed, it will not jump off on its own. You may have to do you have, may have to try this a few times before you can get the hang of it. But yeah, it's not that difficult. So Right, so it should look something like this. If the spring is jumping off uh, constantly, try to adjust the orientation of the spring. That may be a sweet spot that it can just sit in nicely. Right, then now we are ready to close the shell. Right, everything looks in order. Right, let me just wipe my hands again. Right, so to close the shell, you want to start by closing up from the back like this, All right? So, like so. Make sure the piston cap here is seated nicely, All right? Once you have done that, you can now, uh, again, you can't close the shell because you have to push the bridge backwards just a little bit to clear it so this probably is one of the harder thing to do so put it back all right so once you do that make sure you have your hand applying constant pressure on the shell so it doesn't goes off everywhere all right so once you have done that make sure uh, at least the upper part of the gearbox shell is closed and then now you want to deal with the gears within you can grab something thin, screwdriver or something. Then you want to slowly adjust and push the gear back into the correct orientation. All right, so let's see. All right, so this is how it should look like. Nope. All right, let me just be very careful. Oh yeah, as you can see, the spring came off. 
So I think I can still save this by slightly pulling the spring. Yep. <laughs> yeah, can be can be quite challenging. So be patient and you should get it. All right, so once the gearbox shell is closed, check there is no weird gap. All right, looks good. So now we can uh put the screw back together. Right, all the screw are put back. Now let's install the optic sensor. So the optic sensor, there is uh, there's only one way to install this. So you can see uh, it's a square with this side rounded off. So the same thing can be found on the sector gear itself. So you can't really do this wrong. <laughs> Right, and then we have the gearbox assembled, left the bolt here. But before we proceed, we should check it first. So let's plug the battery in again to test. Right, everything good. Right, let's try semi. Yep, it's much louder now. Let's try the three shot burst. Two auto. Yep, and again, try not to dry fire as much as possible. So, all right, so let's install the dummy bolt. So, this is the, you know, the cylindrical bar just now. So again, you are likely, uh, you need a plier for this. All right, until it's tight. Right, and then now we will proceed to install the bolt. But before we do that, before I do that, I noticed that I have to do a little bit of, a little bit of mod on the bolt itself because when you use the, the screw set that is meant for the aluminum plunger tube, you will have a problem on this port here, this screw port here. My goodness. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Here. All right, so when you attempt to install the screw, you will actually have this issue where the screw will not be able to sit flush with the bolt and this causes some unnecessary uh, friction against the lower receiver and that can actually affect your, uh, how your blaster fit the darts into the chamber. Because yeah, I noticed this issue. So I will use Dremel do a little bit of a work. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So basically what I did was I just used the Dremel and then just slightly widen this part. And now the screw can sit in flush. Yeah, like so. All right, so let's see. Right, it should look something like this. So you can see now this screw sits flush. Yep. Now the last grub screw. And try not to over tighten this because then it will be a nightmare removing it. Just tighten until you feel there's a slight resistance and then you can stop. Right, and then now we are done. Yep, 
Yep, all good. Now we can uh, attempt to install install the gearbox back to the receiver. And so before I actually put it back together, there's something that I want to uh, show you because this is also what we did for our for the Mark III that we sell. Where is the barrel? Oh, here. So um, as you can tell, that this two part, this two groove is machine that it has a slight uh, recessed place. So when it sits in the receiver, this two point, right, it will not be going anywhere. But as a result, this part, the front, is actually uh, it actually sits taller than the rest of these two points here. So what happens is now your barrel is actually at the angle positions when you tighten it. It will you have a it has it has a slight tilt upwards. It's a pretty funny issue. Uh, QWK didn't seem to think that this is a big deal, so they just leave it like so. But um, the way I see there is a potential. I mean, this is a potential cost for uh, for that um, a not so smooth darts feeding operation because at an angle, when the pusher attempts to push the darts in, there is a extra unnecessary resistance now. So I will actually use Dremel to to Dremel off this part slightly so that it will sit so that the barrel will sit on a level positions. So, we are back. Alright, I'm back. So, with this part Dremel, yeah, I <laughs> can't really show you that well. So, now the barrel will be able to sit on these two points and on the level positions. Now, it's completely straight. Alright, so let me just put everything back together. So, let's start. Now, grab the lower receiver. Again, uh, you want to lock the bolt first before you put the gearbox into the receiver. All right. So grab the lower receiver. You want to work your way so that you will not pinch this cable when you insert it into the lower receiver here. So be very careful. Yep, make sure the cable is not pinched but sit nicely along the grooves. Right, and then that's it's in. Now you want to deal with the trigger unit and the board. So right, before you put the entire trigger unit in, make sure to install this black piece back. Oops. Right, like so. Then make sure the cable is out of your way. And then, yep, should be in. Now the chipboard, just sit it nicely, like so. It should look something like this, and then you are pretty much done. So now you can grab the two small screws, silver color, the shitty one. Again, make sure not to over tighten. This does not have to be really tight because they are not really going anywhere. And that's it, that's all four screw in. Now you want to uh, arrange the cable a little bit so it doesn't get into the magazine well. Right, should be good enough. Right, now to install the barrel, we want to deal with this first. This is the Power Cannon Auto uh, Active Dart Corrector. So to install this is really simple, just simply pack it in. Like so. And then you want to place the barrel assembly 
into the receiver like this. Like so. Now you want to push the and make sure the dark corrector is all the way forward. Otherwise, then it may actually obstruct with the insertion of the magazine. It won't clear the magazine. Right, so let's grab the two long screw. Now you can proceed to install the battery compartment uh, cover. Right, if you can help it, try to clear the plastic debris off the screw because that will help to preserve the life <laughs> of, of the screw pots. All right, and that should do it. All right, so that appears to be looking okay. So now we are left with the two pinned on the gearbox and receiver. So uh, for, my, for myself, I will always install from the right side of the, gear, uh, for, of the blaster, which means the charging handle side of the blaster. Now, uh, why? Because um, you can actually install the worker uh, screw sling mount onto this screw pin. So uh, my, fav my favorite positions would be installing on this side so I can have a sling mount here and I can put it on a one point sling or whatever. But yeah, uh, whichever, whichever way you want to put it, just remember how it's installed and then so that you won't damage it by unscrewing the wrong screw. Again, uh, when you install this screw pin, do not over tighten or you will actually crack the shell. Um, well, micro cracks, but yeah. And we are done. Right, so just inspect everything once again before you attempt to firing it, or before attempt to fire it. Fire it. So, um, by the way, this active dark character, you can see these two screws here, it is actually allow you to adjust the height of the active pusher plate. So if you found that it's a bit too, uh, if it's a bit too tight, you can use an Allen key to tighten it just, a, oops. <laughs> just to tighten it, slightly so that the plate will sit higher and that will uh, help with a smoother operation of the blaster feeding feeding the darts into the chamber because after all you see you can see the the plate this thing here is actually applying pressure towards the bridge here so if it's too tight this action may be impeded Yeah, so that should do it. Now we can try and plug the battery in, try and see if this thing actually works properly. All right, uh, let's try the air seal first. Uh, let's release the spring. So uh, safety, pull the trigger, switch it to semi, wait for three seconds. Yep. Yep, that's a perfect air seal. Yep, so with the spring release, now you can't actually pull the charging handle. Right, let's charge it again. <laughs> let's try it again because the air seal is perfect. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, even with the scar muzzle, there's still a really good air seal within the system. So I think we are pretty much done here. So let me demonstrate the firing to you so and also to show you that the chipboard has fixed the issue all right so let's plug the battery in again and so uh, this magazine five rounds loaded this is to demonstrate uh, to show that the three shot burst bug is fixed all right magazine in oh yeah heaven <laughs> all right so the blaster is prime and one round is chambered. So let's just go two shot burst. Alright. Alright, so there's a three shot burst. So one shot of the three shot is fired. So there is a two shot left. 
Let's see now if we remove the magazine, we will actually fire. Yep, it will not fire right now. So even though there's a three shot burst mode still. So uh, with the magazine removed, however, because it's not detecting the magnets on the magazine anymore, you can actually fire the last dart from the uh, chamber. Yep, so that's how it works. Now I have a magazine loaded here. Let's go uh, try and try and full auto this thing. I have uh, mostly worker gen 2 high end and gen 3 and mixed with a 2 uh, the dart zone I don't know what it's called dart zone pro dart or something max striker from like from the max striker right so yeah let's go and yeah take notice um remember to load the dart like the instruction here shows and uh, it will help to reduce the jam by a lot and with the active dart character your blaster will almost never jam so let's go Right, let's just let's just go for door. I mean, uh, yeah, let's try. Um, semi. All right, works well. Three shot burst. All right, works very well. Let's try for auto. Yep, laser accuracy. Even though you can't see it right now, but yeah. So the magazine is empty. The fire, the blaster will no longer fire. It's cut off. Doesn't matter which mode you switch to. So the only way you can start restart, uh, to shoot again is to load a fresh mag with darts or you want to fire off the last round in the chamber you can do so by pulling out the magazine and then just yeah so that's done um, should I show you how to put the upper back I suppose I should so yeah to put the upper back just Grab the upper, carefully slide in. You want, when you when you install, actually when you install or remove the upper, you have to be careful with this part because this part is actually blocking by the charging handle. So you want to actually angle it slightly, like so. And then slowly wiggle it in, like so. All right. And then this is the striker head muzzle thing. Right, should look something like this. And then grab the two pin. And there we go. And we are done. Yeah. All right, not forgetting about the five select switch. Right, so as I've shown just now, this is actually very loose. So what I actually do, what I usually do is just uh, I grab a small piece of electrical tape, for example, this one, doesn't matter. So I cut it into a smaller piece. Something like this. Then you just stick it on the switch itself, like this. And then just grab the selector switch and then just install it and then that, that piece of electrical tape, electrical tape will provide some sort of a, you know a spacer sort of a, mm, friction so now it will comes off harder or if you like to you can use a non-permanent general purpose glue just a small dab and glue this thing in so in case next time you have to disassemble it you can still take it off so yeah anyway uh, even if you lose this piece is replaceable and also it's not essential to the function of the blaster but yeah there you go yeah thank you so much for watching for staying this long because this has been a quite a long video i reckon thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys on the next video